And here we are now with the third episode of Address the Yes, where you guys write in comments and I try to answer them as best as I can. This week we are blessed with Jar Jar's presence. Welcome back to the fold, son. I hope you're having a good time. But first question, Silent Woodfire, he says, Damn it, put on your glasses. Much obliged, good sir. First up, we've got here Ed from TechSource. His uh, place has been burgled into. You guys have been commenting and emailing me, and I just woke up and I saw the news as well because I follow Ed. He's actually a good friend of mine in real life. And uh, it just sucks to hear this, dude. Uh, I'm so sorry to hear that happen to you. Uh, if you need any help or anything like that, just let us know. Always glad to help you out because Ed in the past, he's had my back. Uh, when I went to the States, there was some real crazy crap that happened, and he had my back through all that. So... Anytime, brother, I'm here to help you out. So just uh, say the word, man. Uh, other than that, I mean, he didn't have insurance on the stuff, which sucks. I uh, kind of, I, I, I hope you would, if, you know, once things get back into action again, please get insurance because, yeah, you know, losing all that gear, man, it's just, it's a real pain because you work really hard for your stuff, man. It sucks that someone would go and steal it. But, so that sucks to hear, but it also sucks to hear that the detective is taking over a month just to take a look at it some traffic cam footage as well so epic tech he says can i be praised by the yes man himself for watching every pc part hunt from the beginning of day one yes you can next up paradox design says everyone buy the data back so it will come down in price i do agree yo what's cracking dude yeah, not bad, dude. What are you up to? Yeah, dude. Fucking, um, Rem just messaged me. He said he can get us some more 1070 TIs and 1070s if you're interested. He can do the 1070 TIs by only 300 a pop, and I just told him 250 for the normal 1070. Oh, fuck. Yeah, let's go get a heap of them, dude. Yeah. We've got uh, 14 1070 TIs and 16 1070s. All right, let's go halvesies. Yeah, I'll go halvesies with you on all that, dude. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Just got a call from the king of the coast, and we're lining up some more 1070 Ti's and 1070s. This time for even better prices than you could imagine. Next up, Sir Pratap says, uh, "Is the X5460 a good overclocker, or anything for the LGA775 socket? Overclocking on a Gigabyte P43T Mobo. Thanks in advance, and kudos for bringing such great content. Thanks very much for the compliments. And the X3460 is a solid overclocker, but the problem with LGA775 is you need." good DDR2 memory, and you do need a pretty good motherboard as well. I just had so many headaches overclocking LGA775, coupled with the fact that the IPC and the power consumption is just really old compared to even like a Xeon X3440, for example. And they, they cost little, they don't cost much at all. So in my opinion, go grab yourself an X3440 or even the X3430, which is a four core, four threaded CPU, similar to the core two quads, you can overclock them for next to nothing. And not only that, you'll have DDR3 that'll scale to another build if you want to upgrade to better builds in the future. The motherboards, H55s as well, they're dirt cheap and it'll perform better too. Next up, Regan Marcellus. Thanks uh, so much for the compliments, man. Uh, he asked, the main gist of it is, can you do an X79 overclocking tutorial? And uh, yes, I'll have that coming very soon. Actually, a lot of people are requesting it do an X79 overclocking tutorial. So... Uh, when you guys request stuff enough, I will do it. And uh, in terms of comparing the X79 to the newest gen stuff, that's getting delayed just a little bit because there is some stuff on the horizon that if I compare it to the 8700K, it's kind of just why not wait a little bit longer and get something that's up to date. So stay tuned for that. But yes, X79 and overclocking tutorial coming very soon. Next up, Shrumple Rat says, Hey Brian, with all this PC flipping you are doing, have you ever noticed uh, market saturation in your living area? Yes, and it's happening a lot more than it's ever happened in the past. It's happening so bad to the point now, if a deal comes up, someone's snapping that deal up in an hour. Like, it, they pay asking price, they don't care. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to go a step above that. And you're going to see the sh channel shift a bit of direction in the used PC parts hunts. I'm going to start buying more in bulk now so I can avoid that and I can get better deals as well. Uh, so instead of hunting for the one-time deals, which I'll still do once a month, I'll try to do it. I'm not sure if i'll have the success that i've had in the past due to this saturation but it is a big problem and as a lot more people get into it my local living area the gold coast 
is getting much more competitive. Christopher James asked, Brian, do you like the Air 540 better than the 740? Now confession time. Father, I have sinned. Yes, I like the Air 540 better than the 740. Reasons being, it just looks a little bit better. I just love the look of the Air 540. It's my favorite looking case. Airflow is amazing in both these cases, don't get me wrong. And the Air 740 has the door that opens up. But there's just something about the 540. I just love it. Next up, we've got Tyrone Baloney. He says, ever come in with an inconsistent problem where the PC boots and it just won't let you into the UE5? It takes 69 seconds to boot to Windows if I don't touch the keyboard. If I push delete on the Ashrock splash screen, it freezes. Occasionally it will boot fine, but it let me into the UEF5 via F2 if I don't go into the UEF5. It boots to Windows within a couple of seconds. I feel like I've troubleshooted everything, even flashed the UEF5 to the latest. And because the problem is inconsistent, I get it on and off without changing anything. It's hard to narrow down the issue. Is my motherboard toast? Only a six week old Z370 Extreme 4. Your opinion is greatly appreciated. I would, it's hard. Like, it sounds like you don't have other parts to chop and change with. And that's when diagnosing PC problems gets really hard. I would try changing out different components and seeing if it is the motherboard or seeing if it's a different component because it could very easily be uh, the, a hard drive or it could be the NVMe SSD. It could be compatibility issues with memory or it just could be a number of problems where you're really not going to find out unless you change over parts and really see what it is. Uh, but my guess is it's actually bad BIOS settings. I would recommend clearing the keys, the boot keys, and then starting all over again with a fresh install because I have come into problems in the past where the computer just won't boot uh, and then you will just clear this, the actual boot keys up, especially with NVMe SSDs. And then you uh, reinstall Windows with a fresh install with that drive and you should be good to go. So maybe if you're porting that NVMe over, it might cause problems. Just give it a try. I mean, back up your data before you do this, but it could fix your problems. Mr. Brian TY City, what's your PO box, please? I need to send you over some bits and bobs to have some fun with soon from the overpriced and not so United Kingdom. Thanks a lot, Phil. If you guys have parts that you no longer want or you just can't get them fixing and you want to see me use it in Can Yes Fix It, then PO box is right here. And thanks a lot for your donations, whatever they are, how small or big they may be. Damien Bragg says, yo, you got lazy eye. I'm not quite sure. I do have a problem, I think, where sometimes one of my pupils is larger than the other. So that may give the appearance of lazy eye. But I've like, I actually got a few comments about this like a year and a half ago. And like I started asking my parents, my brother, all my friends. I'm like, yo, have I got lazy eye? And so I guess in this video, I'll get some feedback and see if I really do have lazy eye. Next up, Winter, he says, with GDDR5 and 5X going to 6, cool stuff, when and what kind of performance might the PC community see in regards to system memory? I do understand the system graphics memory are different, thanks. Uh, you're talking about DDR4 versus DDR3 and then going to DDR5. I got no idea what their intentions are. I think DDR4, for what it's worth, is currently already uh, saturated to the point where CPUs can't utilize anything better than DDR4. There's no point to go to DDR5. Uh, but in terms of graphics uh, cards, for instance, the new RTX series, they can definitely utilize GDDR6 versus 5X or uh, 5. And so there's a need to upgrade to that. And when you think about it, it's actually kind of sad the way CPUs and the CPU market is going. That kind of uh, proves that there really isn't a whole lot of gains in the CPU IPC improvement itself. And instead, you're just going for more cores and with that quad channel and then uh, hex i don't even know if we'll ever see hexa channel but we've got octa channel already i believe so some crazy advancements next up robin blatt says can you wear a hat no and also he says uh, how is the workstation working out for you do you like it for the money or do you actually prefer it for your editing your stuffs i love this new workstation the x79 workstation i'll put the video up here if you guys haven't seen it uh it's just really working out for me and you guys are seeing all the content coming out i'm doing it on that pc and before then i had many different PCs. So it's a testament to how good it is. Next up, Jolinator. Uh, also, how you doing, man? I noticed he's been around the channel for quite a while. He says he disagrees with you on the fan speeds. I managed to farm 300 GPUs running 24 seven and there's no need to run the fans at 100% speed. You'll wear them out faster and the fans do fail. That Delta report you provided is from 2001 for a 50 mil industrial grade Delta fan. Gearbyte are not using ball bearing fans these days, neither are a Zeus. 
Don't believe crackling ice or myself. Go over to Bitsby Trippin channel where he has two and a half thousand GPUs and shows you a bunch of failed fans on GPUs. You can also do the technician's channel who has 90 GPUs and has videos of failed fans on GPUs. Rain GPUs at max fan speeds for the sake of a few degrees matters nothing if they're not throttling and are at safe operating levels. Also, you have increased power consumption when you're talking about 50 plus GPUs. And this is the bit where we're kind of going to get to a stalemate because if you had 300 graphics cards, it's hard. You have to do an experiment where you've got 100 graphics cards at 80% fan speed, 100 at 60% fan speeds, 100 at 100% fan speeds. And then from there, we could at least inference some data on how many of those graphics cards failed completely, actually died, how many of them did the fans just fail and then they switched off, and how many of them did have some other sort of problem. I think with the two and a half thousand GPUs, I would have loved to have seen 80% versus 100%. That would have really a thousand uh, of each would have given us a really solid uh, base to work with to get some uh, really good statistics and numbers and uh, correlations of coefficients. But we, since we don't have those numbers, and I haven't done it, I haven't done the tests, and no one else has done the tests, I guess we don't know yet the um, what would be worse, having a GPU fail due to just heat, because your heat's going to be lower with 100% fan speeds, make no doubt about that. But at the same time, the fans, I agree, the fans would be more likely to fail at 100% versus 80%. So you've got a trade-off there, in my opinion, and we have to know the numbers, because replacing a cheap fan is, for me, in my opinion, a lot easier than replacing a whole graphics card. Next up, Shonk says, it's a Zeus and not Asus. Actually, this is a funny thing. What we're going to do right with this very video is uh, do a bit of pronunciation and have captions turned on, because I'm going to get a bit of feedback for myself as well, uh, due to see how the algorithm matches up with Asus or Asus or ASUS. Uh, what's some other ways of saying it? As us, Asus, Asus, Asus. And from there, I'm going to watch back this video and see which one hit the mark. And that's actually the most important one for obvious reasons. Next up, Squishy Poo. How you been, man? He's a long time viewer. He says, I live in a town where a Australian vacation company takes a stop. The company takes these people out to the bars and around town. What's the best method of picking up an Australian girl? And what is a Sheila's favorite drink? A different kind of question, but Australian girls, they love, in my experience at least, a lot of them love like a lemon ruskies and sort of these uh, sweet drinks that I guess aren't too sweet, but they're easy to drink. So you can figure out maybe some American drinks that are really nice like that, that aren't in Australia, then that could be a great talking point. Hey, you want to try this drink? Uh, it's really nice. You don't have it in Australia. And that straight away will show to the girl like, oh, hey, he actually researched Australia. Uh, women nowadays, I guess a lot of them want to know that you uh, care about them. And in terms of the best method for picking up a girl, obviously the more you try statistically, the more chances you're going to have to succeed. Nowadays, I think more of a statistics game, uh, like don't be not confident and all that other stuff that you've read, but at the same time, if you never try, then you'll never know. So just try and talk to the person. Uh, usually with girls, like I know in the first 30 seconds, you either connect or you don't connect. And to be honest, I don't, nowadays, I don't want to even get with a girl who I'm not connecting with. So it's just, for me, it's just a waste of time. So uh, yeah, have a chat, just say hello. Best pickup line of all time. Next up, Mitch Barron says, Hey bud, uh, loving the Address the Yes series. Great stuff. I have a question. I've been looking into doing some PC flipping and I found it very challenging and I've read that it's a tough thing to do. My question is, what is the flip sweet spot? Do you flip a certain price point? Your rigs fly off the shelves. I built a $900 build in the last few weeks with some bargains and failed to even sell it yet. Uh, too high end, all the best. Love your channel. Uh, any build at any price point can sell. I find the lower the price, the easier it's going to sell. Like, even a two, three hundred dollar PC is going to sell faster than a five hundred dollar PC. The sweet spot, of course, is going to be how much you get the deals for, and then how much you're flipping it for. So that's why this game is so interesting because you can make money at any different price point. It's just you've got to offer value. I've also made a heap of different videos in the past, whether it be in vlogs or uh, different sort of videos um, talking about flipping PCs. I'll put some links in the description below. Next up, Mr. Freaky J says, "Hey Brian, I have a question uh, that I'm not sure you've discussed in previous YouTube videos. If suitable you maybe can include in your next address the yes video when buying used parts in general not only the gpus what is your course of action if you get a component and it is dead when you test it back at home do you generally write it off or immediately bring it to the attention of the seller and try and get your money back thanks and keep up the great content creation 
Uh, I have been, this is essentially getting hosed. I have been hosed in the past and unfortunately the times when I got it, I was met this guy at the servo station and yeah, as soon as I found out the component was bad, I messaged him like furiously. I'm like, dude, you're scamming someone. You're saying something it's working and it's not working. And I never do that to people. So it's, it's like, I hate it when people do this. So it's uh, nowadays I like to go pick it up at someone's home because if there's a problem, I can just rock back up there and be like, yo, you sold me a dud component. I want my money back. Uh, it really it does trigger me a lot if someone sells a dud component. And if you try and hose someone, there's going to be a problem. But from that, I learned a lesson. That was to take a photo of their driver's license if you're meeting in a public spot, uh, just so you've got some kind of uh, sort of avenue that you can fall back on. Next up, we've got the Pro 8. He says, 450 for a MOBO. What TF is wrong with these people? Do they people in computers are bankers or something? And we still need to be robbed to buy fans ourselves. Please continue to promote good value and F these crooks that want to buy another YouTuber. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm not really... Uh, I'm just doing a video on X399 VRMs. I'm not doing a, a video on the value of X399. And actually, in the past, I've stated that these motherboards are very expensive. Same with X299. Uh, so if you're looking for value for money, yeah, X399 is not where it's at. Um, of course, I've got the motherboards there, and I, I think maybe it's a good video that people would be interested in who do have more money and want to get the 16 core or even the 32 core. And so I didn't see any other videos like it on the internet, so I decided to do a video just with some simple tests. Next up, Rusty Bones Games. He says he wanted to thank us and he loves the channel. Thanks so much. He's built over 400 systems in Minneapolis, MN, USA. The best bang for my buck I've gotten recently was an X99 build. Uh, and that looks like it's some really good value. Really good deal, man, especially for a 6-core 12 thread that is still so relevant to this day. You're paying pretty much for all that gear, what you could get an 8700K for, and it performs really close to that. Awesome. Arteezy next asks, hey, when is the video about health and life and losing weight coming out? Uh, very soon. I'm aiming to get it done at the end of this month. Got the RTX 2000 series to cover. Got a couple of other videos to do, but I'm aiming to get that out at least the first part at the end of this month, followed by the second part. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. It's coming very soon. Get ready. Next up, bring me Peter Pan. He says, do you think it would be fine in a case with a top rear fan near the VRMs? That's for X399 boards. Uh, with the X399, the 1950X or the 2950X, they're the 16 core CPUs. They're gonna be fine uh, with any of these X399 boards. I was just testing the 32 core overclocked and that thing gets insane. The power draw goes next level. Uh, and so, yeah, if you do get those uh, motherboards, make sure you've got something cooling those VRMs just for peace of mind at the very least. But to answer the question directly, uh, I definitely have the, say for instance, you got a radiator up the top, pulling air, sucking air out away from the VRMs. I'd at the very minimum have that, but me personally, I'd be sticking a fan right near it and sort of angling it to push air right on those VRMs. That'd just be me. Next up, Hacksaw Mender says, King of the Coast is Brian's Tyler Durden. Perhaps. And then after that, Mustafa says, I think the King of the Coast is Les from Brian's February Parts Hunt, the guy who sold six computers to Brian. No, he's not. Next up, we got Paul Hamilton. I guess I've got to address him directly since he's wrote quite a few comments now about the sponsored content here on the channel. Uh, and he says, uh, doing a quick eBay search for 120 gigabyte SSDs in Australia, they go for about 50 AUD. Uh, for less than double the cost, you get 7.5 times the capacity of uh, Intel Optane, but you can't even mention this in a sponsored video. Yeah, it's because first of all, I'm gonna address this before we even read more of the question. Intel is sponsoring out the video. I'm not gonna recommend an SSD over their product in their sponsored video. Furthermore, I don't call it a review. It's not a review. I'm not reviewing Optane. I keep my use of the word review sacred. And when I use that word, people know that's a different kind of video altogether. Furthermore, why aren't you looking at Optane from a standpoint of it replacing SSHDs, where its real value is then extracted? Not only that, you can place it in a computer that already has Windows installed. You don't have to reformat anything. You don't have to do anything. You just put it in and configure it. Now, in terms of Optane itself, all that research and development to get the technology to work the way it does, doesn't come for free. An SSD is just an SSD. You can add it to your laptop, but you're only gonna have 120 gigabytes there of SSD storage. 
you can combine Optane with a two terabyte hard drive and now that hard drive is working a lot faster than it otherwise would. Not only that, a two terabyte SSD costs a lot more than a two terabyte hard drive coupled with Optane. So Optane does have its merits. And then you continue on to say, I've never one time seen you put this in an actual price to performance build that you put together for use and or resell, but it's possible I missed something. This That alone speaks volumes. There's a lot of videos I've missed doing and I haven't had time to yet. And I might just use Optane for the 16 gigabyte module for 28 bucks and couple it with a two terabyte hard drive because it's really good value. In the past, I've used SSHDs and builds. Uh, and furthermore, have you seen me before Intel dropped the price on Optane? Did you see one sponsored video on Optane from me? No, you know why? Because I didn't believe it was good value before they dropped the prices. Yet other people have done sponsored videos before they dropped the prices. So he then goes on to continue that that alone speaks volumes as if to sort of take a stab at my integrity. Uh, I was going to say from here on is, is I've seen your profile pick. It looks like you're literally 12 years old. I've stopped catering uh, at least in the last month. I've taken a step back on my channel and I've said, okay, I'm going to stop catering towards younger audiences. So you're going to no longer see any more faces in the thumbnail or anything like that because I'm going to start taking care of my audience, which is my main chunk at the moment. And that's 18 years and older. Uh, more specifically 25 to 34. These are the guys who watch my content. They support my content all the way through and through. And so I'm going to stop making. So with that, I'm going to stop catering towards people who look like what you do in your profile pic. No offense, man, but you clearly don't get what this is about. You're getting free content from me where a lot of that content is stuff like X79, use builds. I don't see any other YouTubers doing this kind of content. Yet when I take a sponsored video to put some food on the table, I'm a terrible guy, I'm a shill. And at the end of the day, dude, if you don't like the videos and you don't like who I am, then don't watch it, man. I'm not forcing you to watch this content, Paul. Next up we got from Moo Moo, Intel Optane isn't worth it. Please don't do sponsored videos if you can't recommend this to anyone. I actually can recommend it to people. That's the thing. In Australia, you can get it for 28 Aussie dollars for a 16 gig portion. It's very cheap at those prices and you will get a big benefit over using an old hard drive, not to mention it merges into one drive. Next up, Monchina says the VS series are really bad. This is the power supplies. They can burn your house. Uh, I've used the VS series and I will agree that uh, with people that they're not for overclockers. If you're overclocking, I wouldn't use a VS power supply. But we, we had that in the scum build. It's a G4560. It just sips power. We had an RX570, which isn't that power hungry. And here's the thing. When I overclocked the Gravis card, I was using about 250 watts from the wall. And uh, that was overclocked graphics card. So if you underclock the graphics we'll just have the graphics card running at default. And we, we've got to take into a portion that this power draw from the wall also includes your 3.3, your 5 volt, all your other rails and the power consumption from those. We'd be lucky to use 200 watts on the 12 volt line. Not to mention it gets converted then again and you're losing efficiency. So this thing could be really drawing maybe just 160 watts which is sort of half its 12 volt rating and what it's designed for. I think the VS series is going to be fine in a lot of cases, but maybe if you're using a VS 350 with like a four core eight threaded CPU and a GTX 1080, sure, draw the line there. You shouldn't be doing that. Uh, but in terms of what I use the VS for in that build, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Next up, Sly Wacker 621 says, so you're pairing a GTX 1060 with an 8700K. Nice bottlenecking you dishonest hack. Make the video using a 1080 Ti so I can laugh as you're exposed for the idiot you are. Man, there's some hateful comments coming in. First of all, uh, Sly Whacker, let's take a look at your channel and what you consider quality uploads. And uh, I'm just going to pause there and just face palm. But anyway, here's to address your question. The kicker here is that I've never seen one person use an i3-8100 with a 1080 Ti. I've never seen one person pair that combination. On the flip side, I have seen someone pair a 1060 with an 8700K. And this is actually a lot more common than an 8100 with a 1080 Ti. So the point of that video was to show that the budget 4-core coupled with a mid-range graphics card is not going to bottleneck your experience. So I don't know who's laughing now. Are you still laughing or I think I'm laughing as I hit the dislike button on your terrible content. Next up, Shiba says, Hey Brian, are you planning on testing the new Ryzen Athlon? It should be similar to the G4560, but even cheaper and with a better GPU. Uh, 
Um, I haven't uh, realized the new Athlon yet. Thanks. I'm going to take a look at it. I'll see how I go. Uh, but if it's a good value proposition, yeah, we can definitely take a look at it. Next up, Wallace says, hey, B, why don't you put together a Tech Yes cleansing kit and sell it on your channel? I got to get some shirts made up first. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been trying to get some merch made up for a while, but that's an awesome idea. I I'd, I'd definitely have to have some time on my hands to get something together. But if I did put this together, it would indeed be the Tech Yes cleanse kit. Next up, Boppin says, I was thinking, is a Corsair VS450 enough in 2018? Will it work good in a gaming PC or should I go with a better power supply? It depends on what you've got in the components. We just talked about this with the VS350. Uh, if you're going with like a four core, eight threaded CPU and like a higher end graphics card, definitely get something better than a VS450. But if you're just going with a mid-range card, like a GTX 1060 and even like an i3-8100, VS450 is going to be fine. But if you are looking at using that power supply more over in the future and upgrading your components, definitely grab like a solid 650 watt power supply. Next up, we've got Jargender69. He says, I don't remember last time I heard this much bullshit on prices. Uh, on that exact same video, you should pull up all the other comments where people are literally getting better deals than I am on Gravis cards. And this happens all the time on my Twitter as well. So maybe you've just been having too many 69s and you haven't been uh, checking for deals. Next up, Simant says, Brian, please keep using 12 gigabytes of RAM in this G4560 build. I often feel 12 gigabytes is enough. You don't currently need 16. Interested to see how it goes. Yeah, the thing about the 12 gigabytes is the reason I don't like doing it is because you do lose dual channel and then you've got like a mismatched stick that will run at the slowest speeds. So there are disadvantages to using a configuration like 12 gigabytes, but the advantage is, especially with the G4560, is you're not really going to experience any bottlenecks because uh, it's not such a demanding CPU and you're not really, once you got maybe an 8700K, it would make more of a difference. And definitely on Ryzen, it makes a huge difference. But in this case, with the G4560, it's it's fine. You're going in single channel, but you are getting more memory. So 12 gigabytes is better than eight or four. And so if you did run into a memory limitation, the 12 gigabytes would help solve that. Next up, Julian Benedict says, hey, Brian, love the vids and especially this concept of q and I have a question for you, though. What do you think of the Chinese branded SSDs? I've been looking on AliExpress for some M.2s and came across this brand King spec. Seemed to have decent performance and it's priced decently too. What are your thoughts? Yay or nay? Cheers. Uh, I've only had one King spec, or I think it's a King Dion, and it's rocked up and someone donated it to me, but it was already dead. So I've got a dead King Dion here. But in terms of a King spec, if you buy it off Ali, it's going to be guaranteed to work. If it's not, you can get your money back. Uh, but I haven't tried one yet, so I couldn't quite tell you, but I'm sure they'll be okay. I mean, they all use the same OEMs from the same factories and then they just solder it all together. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Address the Yes, episode three. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions that you need to get off your chest or you're just dying to ask, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Peace out for now.